Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about Inspector Gadget. It was a show in the 1980s about a half-human, half-robot detective. Uh, <laughs> no. This one was funny. INTENTIONALLY FUNNY! It centered around the Inspector's bumbling antics to stop a supervillain named Dr. Claw, while Gadget's young niece, Penny, and a dog named Brain, would go behind his back and solve the crime for him. It wasn't anything special, but for kids, it wasn't that bad. It had a smart, humble role model who never got the credit, but was just happy to see justice done. It had a menacing villain you never saw who had a pretty intimidating voice. Well, well, what a delightful surprise. And of course, it had that kick-ass song. Doing a movie on this premise, however, would be tricky, but not impossible. Great care would have to be taken. Let's see, um... I know! Let's get that idiot who said that's a lot of fish from Godzilla! And while we're at it, why don't we get that moron who ruined Madonna's career? No, the other one. There you go! And finally, let's get one of the greatest directors of all time, the one who directed the coming-of-age classic, Cool as Ice. I smell genius! No As if that trio of idiots wasn't enough. This movie has horrible writing, terrible jokes, and follows the show about as closely as, well, casting John Leguizamo as Luigi. I mean, it's bad. This shit is really, really bad. So go, go, Gadget, fuck a movie, because we're in for quite an experience. This is Inspector Gadget. So as the film begins, I have to admit, it is pretty cool hearing the theme song in a motion picture. But that quickly changes when we see the cock face himself, Matthew Broderick. Good morning, Officer Brown. Very well. Officer Brown, how do you do? Yeah, he hasn't even said anything and already I hate him. We see this annoying dream sequence where he saves a bus of kids from danger when we suddenly cut to cliche number 5621, thinking you're kissing a woman when really you're kissing an animal. Go, go, gadget rehash. Brain. <laughs> <laughs> Having another hero cop dream, Uncle John. By the way, this is Penny, everybody. Yeah, they couldn't even get a blonde girl to play the part. They said two years as a security guard isn't enough experience to be a cop. Uncle John, I'm sorry. And of course, just like in the show, her parents are... Not around. And thus, Uncle Gadget, known right now as Uncle Brown, is left alone to take care of her. This is Bray. He looks nothing like the cartoon, doesn't talk, so let's move on. It's not the badge, it's the heart behind it. I'm very proud of you. Well, wait, wait, oh, wow! The hell was that? Well, nothing? Anyone? We're, we're not gonna address that? Okay, uh, we'll just come back to that later. We see a scientist played by Odo from Deep Space Nine and his daughter Brenda as they're trying to work on a new invention that can control robotic limbs by the power of the mind. Tap your foot again. What, what were you thinking about? I was thinking about how much you remind me of your mother. That's it! It's animated by will, not by thought. By your heart, not your head. Oh, I see. So it's love that fuels scientific mental animatronic limb repair. Oh, and this just in, believing in fairies can regenerate dead tissue back to life as well. <laughs> okay, time out! What the hell is that? Well, why are there suddenly random things popping up in the segways? <laughs> Unless those are the segways? Okay, film 101, guys. When you do a transition, you want something that actually... transitions. Not incredibly distracts from everything. You see, guys, when you do something this annoying and this distracting, it doesn't add to the style, it just takes away from the story. What little there is! I mean, if you're gonna go that far, why not just go all the way? Why don't you do this? We did it! <laughs> So Brown, it turns out, is a security guard at the doctor's place, and often makes chit-chat with the doctor's daughter, Brenda. But little do they know that the evil Dr. Claw is watching, and ready to steal the robotic foot for his own diabolical needs. 
Maybe he's hoping to start an animatronic kickball team. He zaps the doctor, I think, gets shot and edited by a monkey, and Brenda comes across the lab and sees what happened. Dr. Bradford, I won't rest until I find whoever's responsible. Justice will be served. Look at that! I almost pulled out of my wide-eyed blandness and delivered an actual human emotion. But I pulled back into the blandness just in time. <laughs> oh, that's too much emotion. <clears throat> just in time. So Brown goes after the bad guys to see if he can make justice prevail. Oh no. We've been chased by the hatchback squad. Um, were you meaning to keep Dr. Claw in the shadows? Because you are aware you're revealing him quite clearly right now. Now he's back in the shadows again. Are we just supposed to forget you revealed him right there? I mean, we saw it! There's no surprise now! We know what he looks like! Why put him back in the shadows if you just showed his face? I mean, it's sort of like starting off the original Star Wars movie with... The Imperial Senate will not just steal for this. When they hear you've attacked a diplomat- Don't talk back to me, young lady. That is no way to speak to your father. Oh, shit. You're not supposed to know that yet. Um, just forget that part, everybody. Totally not important. <laughs> uh, carry help. I don't know what you're talking about. Good, good. Go with that. Take her away. Dodged a bullet. <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Claw finally reveals himself again and uses an explosive to blow him up. Remember, smoking kills. <laughs> By the way, did I mention in the cartoon that Dr. Claw never reveals himself? And even if he did, would this be at all what you imagine he looked like? I imagine he looks like a monster! I imagine he looks like a machine! I imagine he looks like that gay guy from my best friend's wedding. No one else? So the explosion leaves Brown about as broken as his acting. Brenda makes a plea that he always thinks with his heart, so he'd be perfect for their weird-ass little robot operation. Thus, all the doctors come together to put Mr. Brown back together. Oh, are they loading him with cartoon sound effects? Ready and ready! We see that Claw actually has a claw now, so he decides to give himself that name. Yeah, I forgot to mention, his name wasn't actually Claw this whole time, it was Sanford Skolex. Just call. One word. Like Madonna. So, let's just recap. Dr. Claw isn't called Dr. Claw, he doesn't own a terrorist organization called MAD, he sounds less like a monster and more like a fashion critic, and the fact that you never see him in the show is being replaced with seeing him all the time! I mean, wow! Did they get one thing right? Why did you change so much? Were you afraid if you stuck too closely to the cartoon that wouldn't be taken as seriously? Need I remind you this movie has scenes like this? <laughs> yeah, wouldn't want to face that! So Brown wakes up and finds that his entire body is laced with, and let's be fair here, mostly pointless shit. What? Yeah, you never know when you might need a balloon. Or bubbles. Fucking bubbles! <laughs> yeah, thank god there's no security guards looking after this walking human atom bomb. Just let him press the nuclear button, he'll be fine. <laughs> Mr. Brown, you've just come out of a very long recovery. You are now a sophisticated network of tissue hardware and software. No! I gotta get out of here. My Mr. Brown. God, is he bad. Mr. Brown. I'm sorry, this guy's a marvel. Truly a gift to bad acting. It's like he never knows which delivery to give, so he sort of stops halfway and decides to maybe go with another one. Maybe. No! I gotta get out of here. No! I gotta get out of here! I know that this is all new for you. A and it must feel strange. By the way, you hear those really annoying sound effects that won't shut the fuck up? Yeah, get used to that, people. It's all throughout the movie. It's like he swallowed Gerald McBoing-Boing or something. No! 
So Brenda explains to him exactly how he functions and how they'll be able to keep him alive. It's a high-powered processor chip that increases the charge in the human brainwave enough to move the machinery that's now built into your body. But we still can't make you act. Without this chip, your body couldn't possibly function. Any more questions? Nope. Then I will just give you your manual to study. Heart of gold, everybody. He's so innocent that he actually makes monkey sounds whenever he sees a woman's behind. Go, go, Gadget hard on. No! She continues to show him how his junk works, and oddly enough, that's not as disturbing as it sounds. And Brown tries to get the hang of it. There were two guys trying to rob a jewelry store, and you wanted to trip him up. What would you do? Go, go, Gadget oil slave. Okay, why would anyone put that much toothpaste inside of him? I mean, how many emergencies require toothpaste? And why a hose? Is there really a situation where you need to shoot toothpaste from a hose? And why did it come out when he said oil slick? And why the fuck can't we see Dr. Claw? I'm sorry, I'm still on that. So he's introduced to his new set of wheels, a convertible. And just to ante up the annoyance in this film, they're proud enough to have the car voiced by D.L. Hewley. Oh, what a delight. Good morning, Riverton. Hey, who's in the car? I work alone. I'm a crime fight machine. Watch this. That turn. Speed limits are for cars, not the gadget mobile. Guess it could be worse. They could be having Chris Tucker doing the voice of the car. Gadget, look out! Look out, gadget! Oh my god! Look out, look at that turn! Let's turn, gadget! Hey, don't you touch my radio! Don't you ever touch a black car's radio, boy! Look out! Touch his animal! Movie. Oh, now, did you see that? A subtle little wink to the audience to show that it's aware it's a Disney movie. <laughs> and of course, when I say a subtle little wink, I mean a fatal stabbing to the eye with a fucking salad fork! A rookie thinking he's good enough for Dr. B. Not that it's any of your business, but what makes you think I was putting the moves on Dr. Brad? Hey, what the hell? Are we in his mind now? Why are we in his mind? Alright, now we're back in the car. <laughs> Now we're back in his mind? Hey, I got an idea. Instead of showing us those extra scenes you shot for the movie but had nowhere else to put them, why don't you focus on something useful? Like, I don't know, getting us to the fucking end credits! <laughs> Yo, Cluso, nine o'clock. So they come across a couple of criminals trying to steal a car. But Brown, of course, thinks they locked themselves out and actually helps them to steal it. Here, this ought to do it. All right, thanks. Surely they made the right choice in making him the world's first super cop. Imagine all those intelligent, hard-working officers putting their lives at risk that don't deserve such incredible powers. <laughs> what a bunch of hacks! Hey, what's a big idea? Open your eyes! We got us a couple of jailbreakers. Well, then we should inform the prison guard. Wait a By the way, just another pain to bring up in this movie. The editing is terrible. I mean awful. Some of the worst I've ever seen. Like, watch this shot. Did you see that? How short was that? One one thousand- It wasn't even half a second! What is the point of putting that shot in if you can barely see it? Was there a subliminal message that was trying to be snuck through? Actually, slow it down. Let's take a look. Ha! I know it! So they finally catch the bad guys and Brown had claimed a hero. Later that night, he's invited to some sort of celebration of the new technology. Excuse me? I'll get it. I mean, really? You gotta put sound effects in even when someone's getting tapped on the shoulder? What does it add? How does it tell the story any better? Hell, maybe they're onto something. Maybe Silence of the Lambs would have been a lot more dramatic if they added sound effects. What became of your lamb, Clarice? You still wake up sometimes, don't you? Wake up in the dark. And hear the screaming of the lamb. Thank you. 
So Claw is impressed with Brenda's work and offers her a job to work with him. But Gadget doesn't trust him, and apparently doesn't recognize him seeing how he clearly saw him blow up his car. So he sets up a listening device that will no doubt lead to more irresistible zaniness. <laughs> You know, I think I figured out the formula for this movie. It took me a while, but I think I got it down. Poorly edited slapstick, followed by weird wide-angle shot of some guy going, huh? and Matthew Broderick looking like an idiot. Yeah, let's try it. Let's see if that works. Slapstick, huh? idiot. Slapstick, huh? idiot. Slapstick, huh? idiot. Well, you can't fault a formula when it works. Except, of course, when it doesn't work. It's annoying as fuck! When do I get started on my big case? Oh, soon enough, Gadget. I have a few assignments for you to cut your teeth on first. Big red, that's Spectre! Spectre over here, man! So Brown gets his nickname, Inspector Gadget, but still wants to get closer to finding out who killed Brenda's father. He takes a look at the only clue from the scene of the crime and sees a small S.I. imprinted on it. But what else could S.I. stand for? Space Invaders? Nah. Scuba Instructor. Oh, what about that? Spolex Industries. Oh, well, thank God they came across that! Lord knows it could be anything else in the entire world! S.I.? What could it mean? Hey, Uncle Gadget, look at that truck! Oh, <gasps> of course! Sports Illustrated! They must have stolen that foot for their brand new foot fetish edition! Away, Tucker Mobile! Look out! But it turns out he's right as he finds the foot heavily protected and tries to break it out. Gotcha! And once again, the formula. Slapstick? Huh? Idiot! Oh, did I also forget to mention an uncomfortable void of nobody laughing? So Gadget gets caught and Claw reveals his evil plan! Along with probably the worst fourth wall joke you will ever see. I don't know what you're up to, Skolex, but you'll never get away with it. <laughs> oh, how cliche, Inspector. <clears throat> I think somebody's been watching too many Saturday morning cartoons. Hmm. Huh. Huh? Unfortunately, Gadget. Wow. Terrible. I mean, ungodly half-assed. No effort was put into that. At all. That has got to be the worst fourth wall joke in a movie since... It's a Disney movie! That one! So Claw shows him that he's made another Inspector Gadget. Only this one's evil! And surprisingly an even worse performance. That's a lot of fear. As he wreaks havoc on the city, Dr. Claw removes the chip that keeps Gadget alive, taking away his only means of breathing. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Chip. By the way, am I the only one that thinks Broderick dead looks exactly the same as Broderick alive? I didn't think so. So Penny and Brenda locate him in the junkyard and try to see if they can bring him back to life. The NSA chip is gone. It is neat, the chip. He's got the heart to do it all by himself. Well, bye. Let me know how that all turns out. Hmm? John? Uncle John? John, can you hear us? He's alive. Brenda. You're alive. It's a miracle. Even though it defies everything logical and everything scientific, Inspector Gadget comes back to life simply through the will of heart. I said simply through the will of heart. Simply through the will of heart! Excuse me. Uh, Jane Aston. You are so frightfully witty, and ahead of your time. Say it! Say it! Say the fucking line! What's wrong with you? Say it! Say it! Say it right now! Oh my god, it's Inspector Gadget, for God's sake! Just say it! Say the fucking line! Come on, say it! Say it! Say it! I wanna say it! Say it right now! Say it, you fucking say it! Out! Is that all I'm good for, you freak?
So the team gets together to stop Dr. Claw. First, they drop off Penny. Yeah, because it's not like she did much in the show. And they track down Dr. Claw's limo. Gotcha! You're under arrest for the murder of Artemis Bradford, Skolex. God, you're irritating. I actually think that was the critic's quote on the DVD. Huh, look at that. So the two gadgets fall out of the car and have a fight with each other. It's pretty lame and not the least bit funny, but... No, there's no but after that. We shouldn't be fighting. We've got a lot in common, except I've got nice and teeth. I'd hoped that we could have worked together. Been partners. Together you and I could have ruled the world! Of course not worth it. So he tosses the villain into the ocean right before saying, Oh, let me guess. You, you should have quit while you were ahead. ahead. And goes after Dr. Claw, who, of course, has captured Brenda. You are under arrest! Yeah, I'm sorry, I still can't get over how much this guy has nothing to do with Dr. Claw. The main villain of the show. He seems more like one of Dr. Claw's henchmen than he does the actual mastermind. <laughs> Who is that? Bring on the brownies! What are you doing? <laughs> You're supposed to be disposing of Gadget. Sit back and relax, darling. Well, how dare you? So as you'd imagine, Gadget gets Brenda off the helicopter and Claw ejects himself just to be caught by the car. Damn it, Damn it, Damn it, Gadget! This is not goodbye. I'll get you next time, Gadget! I'll get you! Oh, Jesus. You know, if you want a movie that's actually more faithful to the essence of the villain, you'd be better off with this. It's the claw! <laughs> Ooh, the claw's coming at you. Ooh, you're scared of the claw. You're scared of the claw. And thus, we finally end the movie. Thank God. I don't think I could take any more of the... And welcome to Robo Brenda Aerobics, where I'll be your host, Robo Brenda. Okay, now it's the end of them, but what your butt? Okay, now it's the end of them. Oh, come on! My name is Sykes. Hi, Sykes. Okay, now it's the end of them. Jesus! Watch, it's a radio, computer, even a phone. Brain, say something. Brain is not here. Complete waste of a great talent, but whatever. Fine. At least now it's finally over. Oh my god! This, this is beyond desperate. You guys are really trying to get at least one laugh. Anything. Any measly little piece of shit giggle you can think of. I mean, really. You're trying everything. You're trying every last minute piece of shit giggle that you can get out of us. You are that needy for us to like something in this movie. Well, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Desperate is the perfect word to describe this movie. It throws every bottom-of-the-barrel joke, every overused sound effect, every tired slapstick routine, and every over-the-top reaction in the sad hopes of getting a laugh. And not one of them works. Not one! It's edited horribly, it's acted horribly, it has little to do with the show, and the stuff that it does have to do with the show, it's a complete slap in the face. It's just crap. Total, total crap. And if I were you, I will go back to the video store and get your fucking money back! Go go gadget refund! I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to!